Hi, uh, I'm Madeline Faber, Managing Editor of High Ground News, and I'm speaking with Felicia Harris, uh, who is Project Manager of the Memphis Heritage Trail. That's correct. And that's probably a project that everyone has heard about a little bit over the past several years as it's taken on a few different forms. Mm -hmm. But now it seems like we're getting the ball rolling. Yeah. Could definitely. you uh, speak a little bit about the current iteration of the project? Sure. Should I give like an update or like a, I guess, an introduction of yeah, what of Memphis Heritage Trail is? So, Memphis Heritage Trail is an economic development initiative that we have here in Memphis, and it's centered around cultural tourism and using that as an economic development driver for our South Memphis and South of Downtown area. And so what it really involves in this particular neighborhood is highlighting African-American cultural and historical assets within the community. And so where we are today, over the last several years, we've been uh, planning on this and it's been in a planning uh, stage and we have, have had numbers of um, e um, state community stakeholders mm -hmm. have been involved in the process through various work groups working on uh, tourism, the physical planning of the trail, who should be highlighted, what we should highlight on the trail. Okay. And so we're at the point now, we're working on our wayfinding signage and our uh, app and technology features. So this is kind of an interesting take on a museum, right? Because it yes. brings the streets that we walk every day to life mm -hmm. and looking at them in a different way through the app, as you said, and wayfinding. Sure. Um, could you speak a little bit about what you hope kind of the everyday Memphian? gains from participating on this right. on this trail. Yeah, definitely. Well, what I really hope that um, everyday Memphians learn is just about the history of Memphis and about the, I guess, the diamonds and the gems mm -hmm. that we have in our own backyard. And so many people, uh, just say for example, do not know about Robert R. Church and the park that's named in his honor and who he was as a Memphian and what he did for our city. And so for things like that, so people can come in and experience the park and play in the park, but also learn history and learn about Memphians and events and things we just do not know yeah. in general. So um, specifically about the Robert R. Church Park, um, there's also kind of a project associated with that, right? Like yes. a new kind of... Um, like an amphitheater or? Right, yeah. So while that park is uh, going to be redeveloped over the next couple of years, and it has a lot of features that's still in the planning space, but it's really the thought is to bring it back to life and to its full fruition of what it was to the community at one point. And so some of it, and to actually make it a park destination that both tourists and residents can enjoy okay. because of its location to historic Bill Street, uh, to historic First Baptist Bill and its vicinity to other major things such as Claiborne Temple and Universal Life Building and being, uh, you know, right along MLK Boulevard. But yeah, so amphitheaters potentially mm -hmm. because all of these things are in the planning stage. But more importantly, a place that we can play, we can it can be multifunctional, we can relax in and use it for recreation. And what are some of those other gems along the Memphis Heritage Trail that people might not know about? Okay, of course we have uh, the National Civil Rights Museum, which is one of the most visited places in Tennessee. We have uh, Bill Street, mm -hmm. again, a, a high tourist location, but we have First Baptist Bill, historic First Baptist Bill, which is one of the earlier African-American churches in Memphis, if not the first on uh, in the South Memphis area. We have uh, R.S. Lewis uh, Funeral Home, uh, we have uh, Claiborne Temple, Universal Life Building, mm -hmm. uh, Lemoyne on uh, Colleges in the near vicinity, Kojic uh, Church of God in Christ right. churches uh, that are known throughout the world. And so uh, a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And those are just a, a few of them I can just kind of think of, yeah. you know, think of right And there are top. different sections of the trail, right? Like it's not just sites of, you know, faith-based or civil rights importance, right? There's also historic residences. Sure. Yeah, so the, the we have several phases of the trail. Our first phase that we are working on currently is our civil rights loop. Um, and I'll revisit that. But to answer your point, uh, your question, we have the historic loop, uh, the historic residential loop, which really highlights the architecture and the uh, historic uh, residences of people such as um, A. Maceo Walker and the Walker family and other uh, mm -hmm. Ida B. Wells and uh, the Hooks family 
and so a lot of noted uh, notable Memphians. And then we have the commerce loop and the business and entertainment loop. This, of course, involves Bill Street and the history of Bill Street, which was once a mecca of African-American uh, businesses, mm -hmm. as well as Vance Street, um, which was, oh, again, once a street that a lot of Memphians lived and had businesses on. Right. And so where we are um, today. And where we are today. Yeah. And so, you know, so those are just some of the uh, residential mm -hmm. loop, the e-commerce, I mean, sorry, the business and commerce loop, and the civil rights loop. Okay. Yes. Um, and how do you see the Memphis Heritage Trail complementing the current South City development? How do you think that history sure. can inform the next um, incarnation of this neighborhood? Definitely. Well, um, as we know, we received a HUD a grant in 2015 to transform this neighborhood. And our Memphis Heritage Trail story actually was key to that application, was one of the hallmark features mm -hmm. of the application, in that we want to, as the community come back, never forget where we have come from mm -hmm. and those shoulders that we stand on as, as, you know, as citizens of the city. But also to use the history to tell the story, to engage the future, to educate you know uh, residents about the neighborhood and keep those historical and cultural assets and also to use them as opportunities to do projects such as creative placemaking around the arts and um, education curriculum. So it's a lot of different things, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, wonderful partnerships, I believe, that, that can potentially come out of it this whole transformation exercise. Cool. Okay. And you mentioned um, the app that you're creating for the Memphis Heritage Trail. How does technology figure into, you know, it's such a funny thing to bridge technology, right, with the history, the living history of Memphis. How, sure. do, how do those two come together? Mm -hmm. So, well, we wanted, it, I mean, from inception, we have talked about ways that we can engage young people and uh, people from all um, races and ethnicities and all ages in particular about, um, you know, about Memphis Heritage Trail. And regardless of whether you live right here in the neighborhood or if you live in Africa or Europe or whatever, you'll be able to experience the trail. And so we wanted it to be a multi-dimensional in that aspect. And, but but more, I think one of the most important things is finding a way that we can engage youth. Hmm. And we feel that through technologies is one of the ways. So if, for example, someone's walking down the street, they happen upon a Memphis Heritage Trail wayfinding signage, they can right there on their phone the, download the app or scan a QR code and learn about the spot that they're standing in right at that particular moment. Mm -hmm. And so uh, through the app, they can learn a history, they can learn about where they are in relation to all the other assets. Mm -hmm. But as I said, it's designed to be, uh, to benefit, uh, you know, people of all ages and, you know, irregardless of where you are in the world, you'll be able to experience it. So you can experience it physically as well okay. as virtually. I see. Mm -hmm. And um, so the Memphis Heritage Trail, it just covers parts of downtown? No, currently we are in uh, the southern parts of downtown and we expand a little bit in South Memphis. And then we have key linkages. Okay. So a couple of those linkages is Orange Mound, which is a historic African-American neighborhood recently uh, designated as a Preserve America neighborhood. Right. And we have Soulsville, uh, which is another linkage point, mm -hmm. which, uh, of course, everyone knows about Soulsville and Stacks and mm -hmm. uh, Soulsville USA, as they like to say. Yeah. So. And how do these linkage points fit into the greater narrative the trail is trying to tell? Okay. Uh, because of, you know, these two, and we have many here in Memphis, but because of these two, they have a significant history uh, as a re like the Memphis Heritage Trail is really about highlighting African American history and culture. Mm -hmm. And so these two neighborhoods in particular are you no know, key to that conversation. And they also have uh, within the neighborhood historic, uh, you know, locations such mm -hmm. as everyone talk about Marrow's High School. You yeah. can't go to Orange Mound without talking about Marrow's, and you uh, can't talk about Orange Mound without talking about it being one of the first African American neighborhoods developed by African Americans for mm -hmm. African Americans, and it was a working class neighborhood. 
Um, and then you can't talk about uh, Soulsville USA without talking about Stax and the soul of the music and all the other mu music genres right. that it has influenced. And um, so uh, in that respect, they just fit into mm -hmm. the narrative. It just makes sense that yeah. we, if we're talking about African-American history in Memphis, that those two in particular mm -hmm. have to be included. It doesn't just stop with civil rights. Right, no. Yeah. And so and it's one of our challenges early on in talking about Memphis Heritage Trail is, was, was trying to determine, well, what is going to be the theme? Mm -hmm. uh, is it about the music or is it about the culture or is it about civil rights? And what we found is that it's all interwoven and they each uh, impacted you know, one another. And so if you think about the music that was coming out of Stax, for example, and, you know, in the late 60s, early 70s, so much of it was influenced by the political movement of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just one example. If you want to talk about um, African-American businesses and, you know, how they started and where they started, you know, Bill Street, you know, tells that story. And Bill Street tells the story of the blues and jazz and all the yeah. other music genres that came uh, from Bill Street. So, you know, so they're all interwoven. Mm -hmm. So what we have decided to do is just kind of have it to be uh, interdisciplinary and multidimensional and try to, um, you know, craft out, you know, stories about all of these things. Okay. And so um, as this project gets off the ground, what can people keep an eye out for? You said waste finding signs are soon yes. to come. What right, can those yes. be installed? So mm -hmm. we're looking to have those installed by the end of the fall. Mm -hmm. We are, the city as a whole is like full speed ahead on planning MLK 50 right. and getting ready for that. So and getting, could you explain what MLK 50 yeah, is? Yeah, so MLK 50 is the uh, commemoration of Dr. King's death here in the city and a time that we expect that the world to visit Memphis, the world's eyes will be on Memphis, will be visiting here, will be hearing about us a lot. And so we are preparing for, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, embark of tourists uh, to our city and all of the activity that will be happening. Uh, so we want to be ready so that people will be able to experience um, and tour the trail. And so by in the fall, we expect for our wayfinding signage to be up. We expect for the app development and technology features that tie into that to be, uh, you know, fully up um, and you know, for people to experience. And those are just like two of the major components of the project that we're working on right now. And we expect that um, within uh, this time period between now and April 2018, that our uh, features of our civil rights loop to be complete, which okay. the wayfinding signage is, you know, the major piece of that. Right. And um, how many miles is the whole trail? Yeah. There's so many different parts. Right. right. Yeah. So it's like 7.4 miles uh -huh. um, over 20 blocks. And so we do not think that people will walk all of these in one day. So it's designed where you can start at any point you can experience the uh, civil rights loop one day and maybe the historic residence loop another day and you know just kind of do it like that or you may be on a bus tour and you do experience it mm -hmm. all at one time so it's you no know, yeah but it's a pretty long walk of your yeah but it, and it's also multi designed to be multimodal so you can be on a um, a bike or mm -hmm. a pathway or walking maybe a trolley or a trolley mm -hmm. <laughs> or a bus or a car mm -hmm. or virtually cool yeah and if people want to learn more about the heritage trail where can they check you out well www.memphisheritagetrail.com okay thanks felicia all right thank you thank you